We exalt your name because of your faithfulness and your goodness. We give you praise and we say that you are worthy. We say that you are greatly to be praised. Libra do salala brando do bosa di e catalacari a babonda. Nicra di isele brosa da secete de candi ni mando. Nicra do salarabando do bosta di kere babosa di isa. Retene brundi amazone bosunda ni massa da cari a canda na maya ca. Father in heaven we thank you and we give you praise. Libra saca de bronda di base. Catabra do salibrando do bosta di kere. And as of this time, I want us to just call on his name and just express gratitude because of how faithful he has been, because of how good he has been to us throughout that entire week. Our father has walked with us. Our God has sustained us. Our king has been able to refresh us. Our father has been there for us. Through the thick and the thin, he's been able to see us through. And my God, we bless you and we give you glory. Those of us in the sanctuary, I know there is something you can tell our God. There is something you can communicate with Him. There is something you can tell Him this morning. I want you to take this chance, this opportunity to worship Him, to exalt His name. Malia Rabo Calabrando. My Father, in thee you remain to be Lord of our all. You remain to be Savior. You remain to be King. You remain to be the highly exalted. We bless your name. We give you praise. Zabo Salabra do Zadi Babronda. Mantari Babo Salire Cando no Mose de Babrondia. Ripando Mozoka, Liprade Mozoko, Liente de Mosda da Satara. Libra di Zelebonda di Babase de Satara. Oh, 
Maponda na mazede bosha di zekeliando. Ripando mozone ma brokoli yesi. Ricatra pola, ricatra polare. Ripondi a maza, riketri a bosi. Tilikindi a mando. My Father, my God, I bless you. Father, thank you for the assured victories. Thank you, my Father, for the assured wins. We bless your name and we give you glory. We thank you, my Father, because of the assured my King and my Jehovah overcoming. The assured my King and my Jehovah victory that is coming our way. Oh God, we bless your name. Zika shanebra no la di braso lo kodi ba brande ne bosha da seke talada. Yando mozo kali brase ne kebra no la di brando no boziri di kandi ya bosha.
We have a reason to praise you. We have a reason. Oh, Indeed, we have a reason why we show up here on Sunday. We have a reason. We have a reason. Oh, la basa la because of his faithfulness, we have a reason. My father, because we can trust you, we have a reason. Oh, Calabra do Zekelian Ramazola. Say Calabro Salian de Mosa di Caliba Bronda Diasa Talacandi. Ripa Pola Yando Mosoko de Enda de Mosa da Setaya. Ripro Bosali Catia Mazele Bosa Tatiano. Tatia Zatana de Catala Mosalia Bosa. Ripa Ponda Yamazo. Ripa Cole Basso. Pondria Mazi de Catalano. Ripa Pola di Labro Salien de Mosso de Bondia Mazataya. of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of of your heart. I want us to look a little bit at the word delight. And delighting, I, I, I just looked up the, the, the dictionary and it says to give, give enjoyment, to take great pleasure, to have joy or satisfaction. I Joy and satisfaction in the Lord. I sometimes we try and seek joy and satisfaction from other things. We try and seek joy and satisfaction from people. We try and seek joy and, satisf and, and satisfaction from our political leadership, from our spouses. But I'm telling you, you have to delight not in anything else but in the Lord. They say this is the first command, this is the only commandment with a promise. But this one has something added to it. If you look at if, 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 you, if you look at the at the verse again, you can bring it up please. The condition to receiving all the desires of your heart is to delight. Amen. So you might get some things and miss others. <laughs> but if you want to receive the desire of have to come to a point of delight. You have to come to realize that you have to find joy and satisfaction in God alone. So do not ask why you hit and miss some things. It's because you are lacking in the department of delight. Glory to God. This is the secret.
are the irresistible minimum of us to come and talk. These are the irresistible minimum of you receiving the desires of your heart. You have to be like this. You have to find great joy and satisfaction. Yes. Glory to God. So just shake your neighbor's hand. Tell them to find great joy and satisfaction. Bwana wangu nitakuimbia e bwana wangu nitakuimbia wakati ningali na pumuzi nitakuimbia wakati ningali na pumuzi nitakuimbia e bwana e bwana wangu nitakuimbia ai ai e bwana wangu nitakuimbia wakati ningali na pumuzi nitakuimbia wakati ningali na pumuzi
bless you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, just exalt his name. Receive my 
Lord, we know that your angels are here. Yes. Thank you for your accompanying us, oh God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for, you know, that your presence is here. To take away every sorrow, to take away every sickness, to take away every depression. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the angels are ministering on your people now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for every bandage is broken. Oh, thank you for every chain is broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you, God. We exalt you, we exalt you. And we choose to look unto you, God. We choose to look up unto you, God. Because you've said so that, Lord, if we look unto you, we will live to testify of your goodness. choose to look unto you, God. Where our help comes from. We look up at the mountain. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Oh, we choose to look up unto you, oh God. Regardless of the crisis in the world, we look up unto you, oh Jesus. Regardless the crisis in church, oh, we look up unto you, oh Jesus. Regardless every crisis in Christianity, we look up unto you, oh God. Oh, you are a source of our hope, oh God. You are a source of our strength. Oh, you are a source of our hope, oh Jesus. We look up to you, we look up unto you, oh Jesus. We look up unto you, oh my Father. For your rescue, for your safe, for our safety, we look up unto you, oh Jesus. Oh, we look unto you, oh Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Tazama ishi sasa kum tazama Yesu amene namwe nyewe haleluya tutaishi tukimta.
nesse lugar Source of our healing, oh God. You're the source of our comfort, oh Jesus. We look up unto you, oh God. We look up unto you, oh Jesus. Because you have said so, we will look up unto you. Because you have said so, we will look up unto you. We will not look again at our jobs, oh God. We will not look again to our finances, oh Father. We will look up unto you for that so that we may live. You're the source of our life, so God. That's why we look up unto you. We bless your name, O oh Jesus. If there are anyone amongst ourselves who is sick, Father, they may look up unto you so that they may receive your healing. Yes, Lord. Amongst us, one of us who may be in depression, oh God. Oh, may he or she look up unto you so that she may receive your in freedom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of in the name of Jesus we bless you and we give you glory in Jesus our Lord's name we pray Amen. come on somebody celebrate the Lord celebrate the worship ministry please it is a wonderful session we can do better than that church please let us encourage them let us show them some love they work real hard to bring the glory of God in our midst and as the Bible says he dwells in the worship of his people have we worshipped if you have not worshipped I do not know that is the very best session. I want to thank everybody, you know, for taking the opportunity or taking the moment or seizing the moment to come to church. Let us appreciate ourselves for making that golden opportunity. We know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we surely choose to be glad in it. Amen? Let us appreciate our God for giving us the moment. You know, he owns everything. Time and seasons belongs to him. He has given us this opportunity. There are so many people who would have wanted to be seated where you are or where I am. But this morning, they didn't make it. But now that we made it, are we happy? Are we happy? Yes, so if you are happy and you know, what do you do? Yes, if you are happy and if you don't know, if you don't know that you are happy, don't do it. But if you know that you are happy, just appreciate the Lord by clapping. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to welcome all our church members, the in-church group, 
and all our online members. This is Christian Church International, South Bed. And you are much welcome. And for our online viewers, please do not stay tuned throughout the whole session. For there is something that the Lord wants you to hear. Or there is something that the Lord has for you and me this very day. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are we happy? I'm particularly happy to be in the house of the Lord. I always look forward for that Sunday, 9 o'clock, 8 30, to come into the house of the Lord. Because this is where we belong. Amen. We are here to worship him. We are here to glorify him. And we are also here to say thank you. And uh, I am encouraged this week by knowing that this God, he is a God of promises. And mm, I want to trust in him for one. If he was able to give a child to Abraham and Sarah, he was able, amidst all odds, amidst all odds, where the situations looked like everything was dead, God was able. So if he was able to do that, and Abraham believed in him, Abraham had no, like, forefathers who had, to whom God had done it so that he could, you know, say that, oh, he had done it to them, now he can do it to me. If he was able, to, if Abraham was able to believe, and that happened, how about us who have examples to follow? I would think we would probably believe ten times more than the people of the road. Amen? I know that he is able. He did it for Abraham and for so many others that we know. And Abraham trusted in the Lord. He believed in him. Today, he's asking us. There are so many things that he has promised in our lifetime today. The Bible is full of our promises. And if we believe in it, then we should live by it. There is something today that that book has said concerning me and you. There is something that, you know, like, Jesus, or God, is the one who has the final say over my life. By his stripes, I am healed. Our children will be great in this land. There are so many promises that are in the Bible. But all what is needed, the medium to attain all that is belief. Once we believe, just like Abraham believed, and we trust that this Lord who has said it, he will surely not start lying with us. He will come to fulfill all his promises. And then our life will be easier. It will be comfortable. Amen? So here we are. We shall go by what God wants us to go by. We shall behave the way our God wants us to behave. And we shall act the way he wants us to act. Amen? Do we have children in the house this morning? I humbly request you to stand so that we can pronounce a blessing over your lives. You know, children are a heritage from God. They are like arrows in a guava. In a time of need, we shall use them. So children, thank you for obedience. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. Our dear Heavenly Father, we 
come before your gracious mighty throne this hour, even as we present these dear young ones before you. Thank you for giving them the opportunity to be in your sanctuary this day. Many would have liked, but they are not. Thank you for the parents, for they took this chance and they took this opportunity to bring them into church. As Jesus said, let the children come to me. The parents of these dear ones have not withheld them, but they have brought them to church. Now I pray that they will be taught of you. They will learn your word even from this tender age. I pronounce them blessed because they are. For nobody came to your presence and went empty-handed. As they are taught today, may the word that they will be taught be engraved in their hearts, and in the time of need, they shall use it, even to overcome the schemes of the enemies in this world. They will be great in the land. They are a heritage. We love them and we cherish them. This I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. And now, children, you can go to your classes at your own pleasure. The hour, the time, the moment is with us when now we interact with the word of God. I think this is now the, 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 the climax of it all. Or maybe this is one of the many reasons that brought us here. And I know at this hour, this is the hour that the devil, you know, the devil doesn't want us to get the deal that, you know, that can help us overcome him. And that is why you fight at this time. This is when we have so many interruptions. People want to go places to do all things. But I urge you, brethren, at this moment, if we give it to our God, he is going to use the minister, all the man that he has prepared to give us what the food that he has for us this day. And through it, we shall be enlightened. But before then, let me recognize the presence of visitors in the house. If we have visitors in the house, do we have visitors in the house, please? Yeah, if you don't mind, let, let us... Let us encourage them. Just, you, you can just shut up, say hi to the church, you know, say your, your name and probably where you've come from. Just a minute before we hear the word. <laughs> encourage them as they come, please. Good morning, Bona Sifue. Uh, we are glad to be in the house of God and to come and behold Jesus together with you. My name is Sami Kemaniwa uh, We are from PA, visiting with Dr. Paul. Uh, we came to see baby Joanna, and we're always happy to fellowship with you, and we are glad uh, that we are here. Uh, we have Matthew, uh, he's our firstborn, Matthew Kemani, and the other one is Martin. He just left for Sunday school, and I would love uh, my beautiful wife to say a word so you can hear her voice. Uh, my name is Hortensia Wanjiko Shege, and more to that, I love Jesus as, as my Lord and Savior. We are here to visit uh, Paul's family and to see baby Joanne, as my husband has said, and we are glad uh, for God is good to us. Amen. Thank you very much. We love you, and we welcome you still in the house of the Lord this morning. And now... Time is up. Let me please help me to welcome our very own brother David Waroi for the word. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Online viewers, you are so welcome for this session. It's a very, very great and important moment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we command your blessing of grace and favor upon each and every person that is in this meeting. Even those that are viewing online, Lord, may they receive according to your divine will. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Now, I want you to help me do one thing. Lift your right hand and place it on your heart. Say, Lord, Lord. give me a heart of understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Amen? Amen. Receive it in Jesus' name. Now, do this. <laughs> Some didn't do. Do this. Sit down. <laughs> do you know what that means? You are telling the Lord to take away the veil so that your eyes will not see in the natural. But you'll be able to see through the invisible that your spiritual eyes will have no hindrance. You'll be able to penetrate through every barrier and through every wall of the enemy. And you can receive divine insight. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. My name is our Prophet Reverend David Muturi Waroe. Hallelujah. Somebody said it was better. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm born again. I love the Lord. This is my 41st year since I gave my, Lord, uh, my life to the Lord. At the Kadiroini Secondary School, it was a Saturday afternoon. I remember the very message, Luke chapter 15, about the prodigal son. I remember the evangelist, Kimodoi, and it has been a journey, a good journey. Amen. In the house, I have my wife. Lift up your hand. That's my precious wife. And I have my son. He always comes late for worship, and I would encourage him to be coming a little bit earlier because of the content of the message today. Worship is such a great component, and I'm talking of when we worship the Lord, not through giving, but through praise and singing. We shall see it today. It is one avenue through which God can rescue your life in terms of danger and adversity. It is one way in which God can give you exponential increase, enlargement, expansion, prosperity. It is one way in which God can let you live at an open heaven. Can you say amen? amen. When there is a good place to say amen, always don't miss that. Amen. Amen. And I believe all of us would like that kind of an environment. So we want to thank the worship team, and we know how much time you commit to help us go through that section and through that session. May God bless you indeed and continue to give you grace and favor in that field. Now, number two, I want to recognize what you did last Sunday. For on behalf of the pastors and bishop, it was our day of honor, and indeed we were honored, and we feel honored. Hallelujah. Appreciate yourselves. <laughs> I remember one time we sent Bishop Andrew back to Kenya for a convention, and he went there with a lot of clothes and including jackets, and coats. One of the brethren that had come was from Congo, and he gave him a lot of different sizes of clothes. So when he put one, it was oversized. And he asked him, what do you think about it? He said, kubwa amadogo ni baraka kubwa kwangu. Hallelujah. 
big or a small in size is a great blessing to me. So whatever you did, whether big or small, it was a great blessing to us. Amen? Amen. Now, I would not like to go along that line anymore. Let me get straight to the message. Today, I'm going to teach. Say teaching. <laughs> and you know, I'm a good teacher when it comes to teaching, especially the word of God. It's a gift. Teaching and making people understand the word of God is a gift. And I have that gift. Amen? Amen. Now, I have a topic. And the topic is anointing and adversity. Subtopic. How to avert becoming a victim of adversity. Subsection of that topic, choosing the heart of David and the heart of Joseph. Amen? Amen? Now, how did this message arise? This is not really a new message to me, but it could be a new message to you. But for most of you who have been with me throughout this year, I've been talking a lot about the coming of the year 2024. And from the way I comprehend times and seasons, I've been preparing people and warning people and advising people on how to get ready. Because from my spiritual binoculars, 2024 or the year 5784 is not going to be an ordinary year. That doesn't mean it must necessarily be a bad year. It depends on the choices you make now. And that's why for a very long time, I've been talking about the spirit of desolation among many other things and how you can avert that. But during the last uh, session, I gave you a grip of what the gematria is saying. Those who want to understand what is gematria, go and check our prophetic conference on May 6. I went to great detail to explain. It's a system of prophetic analysis. And it has been used over thousands of years and is 100% accurate. So I say the gematria for 2024 is the letter Dalet in Hebrew. And Dalet, I said, it is starts for an open door. But I also went ahead and said, this is not an ordinary door like the one that we put there, our security door. No, <laughs> this is a spiritual door. And also, it, it's a symbol of opportunities. Say opportunities. So we are entering into a season and an year of opportunities. These opportunities... I say, depending on your choice, can be good or can be bad. Now, I went ahead and I gave the example of Cain. Cain's door is found in the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Cain and his brother, they went before the Lord to worship him. One did it right, the other one did it wrong. Unfortunately, it is the senior, it is the elder, it is Cain who did it wrong. So God gave him an opportunity to correct his mistake. Genesis chapter 6. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? Because he had been rejected by the Lord and the manner in which he came to worship him. Verse 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? So the whole of this year I've been preparing the church to correct your mistakes to collect your wrongs, so that when the time come, you will not be a victim of desolation and adversity. Amen? amen. Say a good amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And if you do not do well, sin rise where? Amen. And it desires, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. That means Cain was given an opportunity to choose good or bad, sin or purity, correction or obstinance or disobedience. And, cho uh, and Cain chose the opposite, regardless of this advice 
from the living God. Now, when he chose at the door of opportunity, because he was being given a chance or an opportunity to choose the right thing. He chose the wrong thing. So when you make the wrong choice, definitely there are consequences. And when God pronounced the consequences for his wrong choice, that was judgment. And this is found from verse 11 to 14. This was his answer. And I pray God forbid this will not be your cry in 2024. Genesis chapter 4, verse number 13. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can. <laughs> you are given a choice. <laughs> you are told, correct yourself. You don't do it. You become obstinate. You become arrogant. God pronounced the judgment or adversity. Then you say it is too much. I hope many people will not enter through the door of Cain. The other door is the door of Noah. Genesis chapter number 6. Let us read verse 12 to 13. I'm preparing you. Today I'm teaching so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. The whole earth was? For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Verse 13. And God said to Noah, the head of all flesh. Talk of adversity. The head of all has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God is about to pronounce judgment upon the entire earth. And let us see verse 21 and 22 of the same. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them, your family. Verse 22. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So, talk of obedience. Noah is told, adversity is coming. I'm going to destroy all flesh. Prepare yourself. Prepare food. But also prepare a place where you will be delivered and where you will be rescued. Let us go to Genesis chapter number 7, verse 4 and 7. I'm about to close on the door of Noah. Genesis 7, verse 4. Now, there is what we call countdown. Countdown means the time is very? The time is very? Near. So, God started a countdown on verse 4. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. Verse 5. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him to do. So, we are on the countdown now to 2024. And I've been saying, and he's saying, now I'm saying, God has started the countdown. Now, the good thing with obedient people is that they have got an, a, 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 a hearing ear. And they hear and they obey. The others are as stubborn. They have their ears, but they choose not to hear. And they choose to do it their own way. Now, let's go to verse 16. That's where you'll find the door. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord did what? Shut him in. After that day, even if you were a king, even if you were the very chief, even if you were the head of the army, even if you were the most beautiful, the beauty pageant, 
After that, even if you were who is who, rich or poor, tall or short, fat or lean, after that, it was a diversity time. It was a diversity. It did not matter whether you cry or yell, whether you pray or you don't. The door had been Amen. I want to talk of one more door. And then <laughs> you cruise on that. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. This door is a very unique door. Because this is a, a door that will open in 2024. We are about to witness a very strange relationship. I'm calling it this strange because it's not going to be normal. A relationship between the Jews and the Gentiles. Between who and who? Between Israel and some other nations. During the prophetic conf uh, conference, I said that there will be a war in Israel. It's a matter of when it's about to start. It has already started. It's on its fifth week. And in other, if you go check that prophetic, because it was almost a two hour and a half prophetic conference, if you go under the topic called geopolitics, you will see some of the things I said, and you see how they are getting fulfilled, like I was making the headline for what is happening now. One thing that I'm excited about is that that day we prayed and we said, when the war break out, we pray that the president of America will start with Israel, which he has done. So God has us, because traditionally Democrats do not support Israel, they, they are very lukewarm. But he has stood his ground. He has sent one of the best classic ship in the world to go there and stand by and say, Musi, Dhu, Butu. Don't dare. Hallelujah. I'm glad about that. God bless Biden. And God bless America. So, I'm not, I'm feeling like something, but just relax. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was a certain man in Caesarea, or Caesarea, depending on where you came from, called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Verse 2. A devout, this is a Gentile. This is not a Christian. This is not a Jew. This is a Gentile. This is a man that was not a covenant man. Hallelujah. But he was a devout and one who feared God with all his brethren. If there is one season when you need to mobilize your children, even the most stubborn, because there, there are many in our houses, they are stubborn. They don't want to come to church. They don't want nothing to do with God. They just want to do their own thing. But brethren, today I will pray for all the parents after this. That this is the time to marshal, like Noah. This is the time to put your house together, like Cornelius. Because when adversity comes, if they are a found like those Israelite kids that had gone into the wilderness to celebrate with wine and whiskey, it will not matter whether they belong to the priest or to the bishop. When a diversity strike, they will be struck. So it's time to pray even for wisdom on how to interact with our own children. Amen? Amen. And even to surrender them to God and to yield them. Do like a job. He woke up very early and he did a lot of rituals. See, who knows what they might have said. They might have blasphemed God and brought trouble to my house. So this is the time and the season for you to put your house together like this 
devout man who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously. Adderine the word generously. Because we will revisit that. When we come to David and the way he worshipped God, he was so extravagant, he did not count the cost. For that, that kind of override or overrode most of his mistakes and wrongs. When you become extravagant in worship, David worshipped God until his clothes did what? When it came to giving, it's the only man, the Bible says, he gave of things of bronze, iron, and wood beyond measure. You could not count. But gold, it was 100,000 shekels. Silver, it was 1 million. One man. Talk of extravagance. Talk of generosity to God. Hallelujah. This, there are people who have known how to worship God in this world. But you see some people even giving $20. It's like they are doing God a great service. I remember one man is standing here and he's saying, me, I don't give a dollar. I only start with the 20. From that day, I say, Lord, I've reached a point whereby I cannot give 20 or 50. Do you want to check? I never give less than 100 on Sunday. Never, ever. It's a covenant. Because God has, has reached me that level. And I'm looking forward to the day I'll be giving 1,000 or 10,000. I've seen people write God a one million dollar check. Myself, here. One million to God. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Shake the man next to you. You know, some people begin to look at me like I'm a stranger. I'm the same David. I'm the same man. I'm your brother. Can you shake somebody's heart and tell them, welcome to the service? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so, so let us develop the heart of Cornelius, who gave arms generously to the people and prayed to God always. We've been coming here, last Friday I did not make it, but we've been coming here every two weeks, every fortnight. Next year, whether you want to come or you don't want to come, Bishop, we shall make it weekly. Every week on Friday we shall be here. Those who want to come, they will come. Because there is no way you can face a diversity in your bed. You face a diversity on your knees. You face a diversity in the Lord's house. That's why there was a special instruction in the Old Testament that if somebody pursued you, regardless, or a death sentence had been placed upon you, and you managed to enter into the temple and hold on the what? on the horns or the pillars that were at the mercy seat, nobody could touch you. As long as you are in there, you are safe. But you want to stay in your house, others want to go to other many places. And think when adversity comes, they will stand a chance. Let me warn you. Praise the Lord. Now, go and read the entire story. What this story is saying is that because of Cornelius devotion, fear of the Lord, his heart of worship, God answered his prayers and he spoke to Peter, one of the apostles. When he was quite a distance and he was told, go to his house. Hallelujah. Amen. And he preached the gospel. Now, that opportunity opened the door for you and for me. We were never a covenant people. We, never, we were never counted under the Abrahamic blessing. Cornelius opened the door for us. Because of being devout, because of fearing God, and because of giving alms, generosity, and continuous prayer. He opened the door for all other races. So that they can also be counted as believers. That was a good place to say amen. Because that's where you and me and every other person came in into the same faith that we pray today that Jesus is Lord. Amen? And where we believe in the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob. So that strange relationship between Cornelius and Peter marked a new chapter in the journey of faith. Not only of families, but also of nations. Amen? Now, in the year 2024, the same will repeat itself. There are some nations that will align themselves with Israel, and it will change their destiny forever. So 2024 will be a year of a fresh start, or what Jesus would have called a year of fresh wine. Hallelujah. New patterns will form that has not been there. There are some Arab, and hear me well as a prophet, there are some Arab nations whose destiny will be turned around, around this time. Forever. Forever. Their hate for Israel will be turned to love for Israel. They will make covenants that will never be broken. We are heading somewhere. Amen? Amen. And there are some troubles that have troubled them in the past that will not trouble them in the future. This alignment is forming and is going to make a major spiritual shift even in the atmosphere. That will position some people and some families and some regions and some nations for a new season of divine elevation. Amen? Amen. This is a season when some people who have labored for Israel who have labored for the chosen ones, will be remembered. Let me give you two examples. When God was about to enter into the land of Canaan, he went through the gate of Jericho. Before that happened, according to Joshua chapter 6, Joshua sent some sentries, some spies, and they were, you know, those days people were serious with the security. Because they were gatekeepers. So these people were attacked. They were seen. And they were pursued. But a very, I will not call her crafty, but I will call her wise. A very wise prostitute was able to hide them from capture and from destruction and from adversity. For that act alone, let's read Joshua chapter 6. Verse 25. Remember, there was a Gentile. This was a prostitute woman. She was a woman of no reputation. But because of siding with the people of God, the anointing they had flowed to her house. And on the day of adversity, she was rescued and spared. Let us read. And Joshua spared Rahab, the who? The harrowed. Her father's household and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day because she, she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. That was a door of opportunity. She had a chance to reveal and try to endear herself to the rulers of the day. Oh, expose them and they be destroyed. But at the destruction of her house, her father's household, and everything she had. But because she made the right choice just at the door of opportunity, that changed the history of that family. Amen? Let us look at Genesis chapter 40. I want to see verse 14 and 23. There is another door of opportunity here. I want us to look at. Genesis chapter 40, verse 14 and verse 23. Now, this is a story of Joseph. Joseph has gone to Egypt. He has served at Potiphar's house. There is a problem between him and the wife. The wife claims that he tried to rape her, and Joseph is put in prison, in a dungeon, together with the two other prisoners, a cupbearer and 
a guy called the baker. And in, in a very strange twist of fate, these two guys have a dream at the same time. And David knew he had a God-given gift. Are you listening? Now, when I'm talking of the widow of opportunity, it's also about using your God-given gift to save another brother, to save another sister, to save your family, to save even a stranger. Hallelujah. But people have become so selfish, they don't want to use the gift. Even when it is presented to them. These people did not know that Joseph was a dreamer. These people did not know Joseph knew how to interpret dreams. But he knew. So when they say he had them talking about dreams, he said, I can help you on this one. And he helped them interpret what their dreams meant. So verse 14. There one guy was told, it's your time of adversity. You will go back, but your head, you will be hanged, you will die. But the other guy was told, is your time of elevation. You will go back and actually you will be promoted. Then Joseph made a request, but remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. <laughs> yeah, I let me look who my friends are. <laughs> Mama Ian, you are laughing more than others. When Mama Ian came here, she was told the only guy who can help you get a cheap, good car is Pastor David. I didn't know how she came to me. Pastor Joseph had a no red Honda Civic car. I don't know what the Honda called. But it had a problem with one of the front tires. So I negotiated from 1,000 to 600 because that's all she had. I am not going to ask you whether it's true or false. I'm, I'm at the pulpit. I'm telling the truth. So I helped her get her first car. Now she drives a Lexus. Please, when God has showed you kindness, Mama Ian, remember me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, the other guy is my neighbor, Joguna. There is a time he had a lot of trouble. Joguna, I helped him twice, in fact, three times. But I remember... I sold him a Ford Trona, a white one. I think for only a thousand dollars. And he drove that car for almost three years. When his uh, niece came, mother, he came back to me. Said, brother, you are the only one who gets me cheap vehicles. I want one that's less than a thousand. I had a geoprism that I was trying to upgrade myself. So I gave him the geoprism for it. Had. He only gave me 600. Up to today, Jogona, you still owe me the, <laughs> the, the, the balance. But now I see him, the wife, even like the other day, he bought his daughter a, 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 a RAV4, eh? the, the, the high radar. Jogona, remember me. And I can keep on, on, on and on and on. It's you, Jennifer. You are looking at me. <laughs> Jennifer always says that the first check in America, the first person to give me a check was Pastor David. Now I hear she's almost becoming a doctor like the husband. Jennifer, also... Let's go to verse 20, uh, verse 20, 23, and see whether this guy remembered Joseph. Uh, about whether Mama Ian, Mama Ian has remembered me many times. To be honest, there is one time she came with such a big 
it was not actually check, it was cash money. I think it was over 1,500 or a cruise. I don't remember whether it was 1,500 or 1,000. He said, just decide how you want to use it. And if you want to share with your other brethren, that's fine. So there are people who remember. Hallelujah. So I'm not trying to say these people are mean. You go now, I have said it time and again, especially the day he saved me from the hearts of evil men. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we didn't have a good uh, brotherhood here and sisterhood. So, but this guy, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but did what? He forgot him. 2024, God will remember you for the good you have done in the past. And because of that good, a diversity will not hit your house. Amen? Now, I want to warn you now as I conclude on this gematria. There are God's appointed doors and there are demonic doors. How do you choose? You need the Holy Spirit to design. Right? Now, <laughs> do I continue or I stop? Higher. Let's look at Luke chapter 13, verse 24. How you will know which door to follow. Jesus also talked about doors and gates. They are speaking of the same thing. It's about opportunities. Jesus is advising his followers, his disciples, and he's telling them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, we will seek to enter and will not be able. So, for you to be able to enter and not get into adversity, a couple of divine nuggets Jesus gave us is number one, you must live a life of consecration, a life of distinction, a life of separation, and you must strive. Hallelujah. When we come here every two weeks, and we shall start to come every Friday, nobody wants to leave the comfort of his bed and come here at night for three or four hours. We are striving. Hallelujah. But if you don't want to strive, stay in your comfort zone. Jesus said, work hard. Seek wisdom. Be guided and led by the Holy Spirit so that you will be able to identify the narrow gate and the narrow door. Now, some of these doors are invisible to the common eye. That's why I said, do what? Remove the veil. So that you'll be able to see through the transdimensional wall. I think it was in the book of Hebrews. I may get it wrong, but let's try. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, if not 17. Let's try verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. It talks of Moses who... Yes, that one. These are the eyes of faith. Moses is a prince of Egypt. Moses is a great guy. Moses is in comfort zone. Moses is the next in line to become the pharaoh of Egypt. In fact, Acts chapter 7 says in verse 22 that he was running in all the wisdom and all the knowledge and all the speaking and speeches. He understood the Egyptian language of the day, like a mother tongue. Hallelujah. But by faith, because he had not walked that way before, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king who could have killed him. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You need to ask God to open your eyes that you may be able to see through the invisible and be able to do the impossible. So there is some opportunities that will not be so common. Hallelujah. 
But if you work with the counsel of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to identify them. Those opportunities will be there. And they are available to you and to me. But you must seek God to be able to see them. Now, let's see the ones that are not God appointed. Matthew 7, 13. Because when many doors open, either you can use the, the hyena method. You put one leg on this side and the one on this side and you decide that we will go through all. And then that will be adverse. That will be destruction. But for you to identify the door of opportunity, the door of grace, the door of rescue, the door of salvation, the door of goodness, hallelujah, the door of grace and favor, the door of uplifting, you need to be guided from above. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? And there are many who go in by it. So 2024 is not the year of the majority. It is the year of the few. It is the year of the minority. Finally, I'm talking of another door called the effectual door. An effectual door, it means it's a door that carries your destiny, that opens you to unlimited resources, including for the kingdom. It is a door that is effective. That's a door that can change your environment, change your family, change your finances. Hallelujah. But every time there is an effectual door, what happens? First Corinthians 16 verse 9. Are you following? Am I teaching you well? Okay, clap for the Lord. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Higher. Paul here is telling us, for a great and effective door has opened to me. And there are many. So brethren, most of these doors that will change your life forever, they have very many adversaries. Who are these adversaries? Adversaries are witches who go at night and decree what we call jinxes and vexes and all kinds of speakings against you. When they hear how God has visited you, they will act like the guy in the book of 1 Kings chapter 22 who asked, how did God reach to Micaiah before passing through me? These are people who really are wicked. They will speak, they will even do rituals. They will slaughter things. They will shed blood so that you don't start. These are demonic authors that entered into covenant with our ancestors. And they feel that you cannot ascend above your ancestors. So when they hear me saying of a chopper, <laughs> they wonder if your father did not have anything beyond a bicycle. And now you are talking of flying in the sky in your own aircraft. That's not going to happen. So these are adversaries. Okay, let me stop there. Let me divine terms. I may keep talking, but you don't even maybe know what I'm talking about. What is adversity? Those who are writing, write that. What is adversity? I will. Divine, adverse, adversity, and adversary. Three things, very quickly. When we are talking of an adverse situation or environment, it talks of a disastrous environment. It talks of an unfortunate circumstance. It talks of a friendly relationship. It talks of detrimental choices or ideas. It talks of unlucky days. It talks of the downside of life. Are those terms familiar? The downside? So when we say adverse, we are talking of the downside. I said in 2019, 
God spoke to me and said, David, tell the people we are entering into a seven-year period, like in the days of Joseph. But unlike that time, this time loud, it will be back to back. 2019 it will be a good year. 2020 we will be a downside. 2024 is another downside. If you didn't accomplish much this year, you need grace for the remaining three months. Amen? Now, what is adversity? Adversity is catastrophe. It's what? Adversity is difficult times. Adversity are hardships. Adversity is days of misery, sorrow, and grief. Adversity is a time of suffering and distress. Adversity are a tough, tough moments. Adversity talks of seasons of affliction. And the worst is when you may face death sentence. All that is considered as adversity. Now, let me get back to my brother John Johuna. You know, John was visited by, by an ear of adversity. And something happened to his stomach. Uh, you know, when I talk about him, he talks about me, so I'm revenging. <laughs> it's time for revenge. And Jukuna could not work for one year. He could not eat some foods. He had a very difficult moment. But one day, he called me. He said, you have to take me to the emergency. Then you see him strong, you know. His mother has never gone to hospital, I think for the last 60 years. Never swallowed a medicine. Jukuna has been striving to reach there. <laughs> And by the grace of God, he will. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> that time, his faith failed him, and he called me. And I took him to Memorial Hospital. <laughs> when we were waiting, <laughs> I will never forget. <laughs> Jonah told me, you know, when I was young, <laughs> I don't know something cut him on his head. <laughs> So he's, he's thinking that there is a revival of the whatever. I told him, shut up. We are just there. On the this has nothing to do with your past. It has nothing to do with your past injury. This is your time of affliction. You better face it. I did that because me have faced this many times. There is a time when the devil has declared death sentence. And I say, no, let's see how it comes out. So I know how to face. I am not that strong, but I know when to say no. <laughs> there are times when I say I'm not going to take any medication. One time, I fell over a bicycle when I was working at near the post office. I said, ah, I am not going to drive here at the gas station on Lincoln Way. I am going to ride the bicycle. So I went there, bought a pub. On my way back, I was not quick to decide whether I will go over the pavement or get to the road. So by the time I made up my mind, already the bicycle had hit the pavement and I had been flipped up and I fell on my arm. And by the end of the day, this arm was three or two times bigger. When my wife came home, she asked me, what are you doing? You should immediately go to the emergency. You don't know whether there are some snooze that snapped or some bone that broke. I faced her on the face and I said, I'm not even going to take any medication, not even Tyrano. This is the devil. And he's going to face it. I went to bed and I started speaking to my arm all night. In the morning, I went back to work. It was good. Up to today, did I go? I never went. Was there any breakage? No. Maybe the devil wanted to take my money. Oh, scanning, RMI. 
At the end of the day, a $5,000 bill. You must have that eye to discern when it is real and what is fake. <laughs> adversary. An adversary is an opponent. Is a foe. F-O-E. Is a rival. Is a contestant. Here on Friday you had some good prayers. On contending with our contenders. And fighting with our adversary. And adversary is your enemy. So all these things work together. Adverse, adversity, and adversary. Because all these adversities are brought by the adversary. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's an antagonist. He opposes anything that is good coming your way. Amen? Amen? I have closed that chapter. Let us go to the anointing. Remember the topic is anointing ed and adversity. So let us look at the anointing. I will use my own definition because if I take time to explain the deeper and the theological and the biblical, it will take forever. Anointing means you are consecrated by oil. But when we talk of anointing for the brethren or the, for the Christian, we are talking of Holy Ghost power upon you, being endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So anointing, the simplest definition is being empowered supernaturally by God through the Holy Spirit. Being empowered by God through the Holy Spirit. Okay, you can also say it is the ability to accomplish or to fulfill what is beyond man's ordinary ability or limit. So when the anointing is working in you, you are able to do far much more than you can do under ordinary circumstances. So you do the supernatural, you do the divine, you accomplish beyond what your normal or ordinary ability can do. The best, I think, definition is Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It talks of how God anointed his own begotten son. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Because those always, whenever they are used in the Bible, they come together. Holy Ghost and power. Let's read. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with? So when you receive those two, the Holy Spirit of God and the power of God, what happens? Who went about doing good and hearing all who were oppressed by the devil? It gives you the enablement the ability to face their adversary. It gives you the power to withstand the devil, to break the chains of even those who are oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. So anointing allows God's presence in everything that you are doing. Whether in business, whether wherever you work, when that anointing is there, God will help you to do the supernatural. Amen? Amen? To come up with new ideas that are novel, that are new. I remember the year when my daughter became the woman of the year in her company. Sometimes that year I prayed over her. And I do that many times over my children. And I say, you are my firstborn. And I bless you the way Juna did last Sunday. And I command the blessing of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, comprehension, skill, ability, excellence. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Now, that year, because she deals with the servers, they have over 300 servers. And when you hear of server, server is data. And this is not ordinary data. It's like a warehouse of information. When she was taking the oath to receive the cause to enter into the data. She sent me a picture. It's almost one mile long and 
cabinets on this side, cabinets on this side, and all of them with the codes because they control information all over the world. So it's not a small thing. Now, those servers were being boosted from now and again, about 300 of them. And they would boost you, you know of reboost, the way you reboost your, 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 your phone to make it move faster and update and whatever. They would do it one at a time. 300 of them, if it takes a day or two, it would take 300 days. Are you listening? She said, I've figured out how I can reboot all of them at the same time. She was told, Catherine, <laughs> that cannot happen. So she went to the top management and presented her idea. She was given a small team and a few servers to test her idea. After like three months of trying, she said, I'm ready. We are ready to do it. We are calling it migration. And that evening, I remember talking to her. I asked her, are you feeling a bit funny? <laughs> she said, Dad, I'm confident. Talk of Holy Ghost power. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit is upon you, you feel confident. Because it's not your ability, it's not your knowledge. You have nothing there. You're only doing what God has instructed you to do. Amen. So they did it in the their perfect 100%. That day, she received a triple promotion. And not only that, she received a huge bonus. And she became the woman of the year. When you receive the anointing, you can do beyond the ordinary. Beyond what is known. Hallelujah. And I'm praying that you receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Especially the young people. We want to hear extraordinary things happening. Amen? Amen? Now, the Bible talks of three levels of anointing. There is what we call individual anointing. This is available to all believers, including you and me. There is complete access to this one. If I keep on giving scriptures, it will take time. But let me say this. This is available to all. As long as you are a Christian, you can do what? You can receive it. What is the purpose of individual anointing? It's for service to people and to God. Or let me put it the other way. Anointing, individual anointing, is for service to God and to others. Hallelujah. When you see Jacqueline and all these other uh, beautiful girls back there, ear in, ear out, cleaning after you are left over there. You know, some of you come here as princes and princesses. You go there, you eat, you drink, then you go home. But next Sunday, you will find the clean tables and no leftovers and all that. And that's why we have no mice or rats in this house. It's because of Jackie, Liz, and this other uh, jelly. That's an anointing for service. And I never hear them complain. It's the only service we never, we don't pay them. So, because you are going to work, why don't you spot one of them and give them $20 and tell them, Jacqueline, I appreciate what you do every Sunday. That way, you become also a partaker. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you go there, you eat, you drink, you go home like you are uh, the, the queen of the house. And them, they are the servants. <laughs> the thing is, everything that you do in the house of the Lord, there is a day when you receive the reward. There is a day I had a burden for Jackie. And I called her, I said, sister, come here. I want to know what is happening about your situation and your status. And she said, it has just been mute. Nothing has been going on, Pastor David. I said, I feel there is something that the spirit of Hydras, and I want us to break it and to pray. 
And we did pray. Within two weeks, she said, I've got good information. They have resumed communication. And now I know her day of appointment. <laughs> Hallelujah. How did I spot her? Because every Friday she cooks for the youth. From her own pocket with the husband. And brings them rice and stuff. So they can eat. Hallelujah. And every Saturday she's left behind there. And I felt this lady has been giving exemplary. And nobody seems to be recognizing. I may not give her money. But may I do something as a man of the house. Like the area of the house. And I asked her. How soon? She said the soonest. And Jacqueline I'm telling you that day. Before this month is over. It will be your payday. Hallelujah. I wish I can say that to everybody else. <laughs> so, so, individual anointing is for service. So service is not just being here at the pulpit. They, are, they remember my sister. Uh, sister Susan, lift up your hand. Yeah. Sister Susan, I don't want to say her age, but she's not your age mate. She's in the, the you, call, you talk of sixth and seventh story. Yeah, that's where she is. But there's a time she had a burden for our bathrooms there. After service, you would take buckets and, and be there and go clean all of them for a long time. God bless you and remember you also. So, service is like what uh, Maoga and Juguna and Muluki did. They went back there and they have their own individual skills. And they said, we think we can change our garage. Now go there and see. You might think we engaged a contractor. They pulled down things. They paint. I wish you could come and find the crap they brought. We had a Juno, uh, that yard for trash over there. And filled with the Paints and with the broken uh, drywalls, and that's the uh, job. And when you see Jonah, Jonah, can you stand up? Let them see you how you appear on Sunday. <laughs> Put, uh, sit down, my brother. That day he doesn't come in a tie. He has paint all over the place, even on his head. And our brother Julius, Julius, stand up. Let people see you. <laughs> sit down. You see now, he's in a three piece. That day, if you see him with his daughters, oh my Lord, where is my brother Muriuki? Muriuki is that a boss? I know you are a good man. He doesn't appear in that suit. Sit down. That day, when you find them there, they really look like they are from the street. Anointing for service. May each and every one of you receive that anointing. Identify the area in the house of the Lord where you can do what? You can do something you can serve. Now, let's read John chapter 3 verse 34. The only person who had no limit as far as anointing is concerned is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John chapter 3 verse 34. The Bible says, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the spirit by measure. To Jesus, the Holy Spirit did not come in measure. For most of us, he comes in the measure. The measure of what you want to do. But Jesus was doing so much, so he was given the Holy Ghost without measure. Hallelujah. May we reach that stature. Because the Bible says we can come to the full stature of Christ. Where you receive the Holy Spirit beyond measure. Where is your anointing? Your anointing is, first, is found in 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. Every Christian, every believer, every born again, the Bible says has this anointing for service. Okay, can we read? But the anointing which you have received from him abides in who? So don't tell us, oh, me, I don't have those gifts. Me, I cannot prophesy. Me, I cannot 
pray, me I cannot intercede, me I cannot worship. It abides. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all, adhering that. And it's true, and it's not a lie. Just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So most of you are stubborn, you are resistant, you are disobedient. You know you have it, but you want to pretend I have nothing. Anointing for service. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 21 and 22. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 21 and 22. 2 Corinthians. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is. So, who anoints you? Who establishes you? So, it's not a bishop, it's not a prophet, it's not a pastor. It's God. Verse 22. Who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So if you don't have that, then you are not born again. If you don't have that, then you are not a Christian. There is a seal. Hallelujah. From who? From God. That has been stamped in your heart saying, I know him. The spirit of God abides in him. He is mine. But you sit there. You don't want to do nothing. All of us should have individual anointing for the service in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to the second level. Anointing for office. The anointing for office. You see, not everybody can become an apostle. Not everybody can become a bishop. Not everybody can become a prophet, a teacher, a evangelist, or a pastor. For you to walk in that capacity, there is a special anointing. That anointing is called the anointing for office. The first person we see in the Bible talking about that anointing is David. Psalms 92, verse 10 to 14. Uh, Psalms 92, verse 10 to 14. Psalms 92. The reason why David was able to accomplish so much, number one, as a king, number two, as a priest, number three, as a prophet, because he had three anointings. The anointing of a king by Samuel, the anointing of a prophet, by the same, and the anointing of a priest. That's why David was able to use the Urim and the Dumim and the, 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 the Iford. He was able to communicate with God directly because he had been trained and he had that anointing. So what does David say? But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. That strength and power. I have been anointed with what? Fresh oil. I wish we can all say that. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. That means the anointing helps you fight back every enemy of your house, of your soul, and even of God. Verse, keep going, verse 13. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Keep going. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Who are those? Say it's me and you. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. My brother and my sister. Where are you supposed to flourish? Where are you supposed to flourish? So when you see, <laughs> let me not go to that line. The other day I was called by the city. And they said, your business has overgrown the license we gave you initially. So from now on, I was given some papers. 
I was told you needed to apply for a special exemption and you needed to apply for heavy industry because that's our assessment. You have become industrial, heavy industrial. <laughs> Brethren, <laughs> you know, I asked him, me, I'm a sole proprietor. <laughs> I'm not processing anything. I'm not manufacturing anything. I don't have any heavy equipment. Brethren, when God is at work, wherever you are, even the city and the mayor will recognize you are in the city. If the code enforcement will know. Even the police department will know. Even the fire marshal will know. Everybody will recognize. And we will know there is somebody around. This church should be recognized in this city. Because of your anointing. But how do you flourish? Not out there. That is only a manifestation. The flourishing happens in the house of the Lord in the Lord's courts. That's why we keep telling you, come early. This is your father's house. Come to the Keshas. Come. Let us rejoice together. Let us lift our hearts together. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you know, when I went to the foreign trip that I had early this year, I was going for two weeks. I ended up spending five months. So when I came back, bills were piling up, and I said, Lord, you know what I did? I could remember specific places where God wanted me to go. Like one church, I went and I found the way they were. Squara talk of poverty. And I said, I'm not a member of this church. I don't know what your plan is, but the Lord tells me to give you 50,000. Everybody looked at me like this is money they have never had. I know another place I gave 100,000. I know another place I gave 150,000. So I was planting and I was lifting brethren and so when I came back, I told the Lord, you know where I was? You know what I was doing? I expect you to do something. And there is one man when the Lord tripled and quadrupled my regular sales. It's reached a point whereby I thought, are these figures real? And I hope the Indian 11 is not listening. <laughs> and now I'm very comfortable. All my ID, my, my, my credit cards are paid off. I really, let me, let me cut that. Now, so David understood anointing, amen? And he said that, where do you flourish in the anointing? In the house of the Lord and in the courts of our God. And the last one, verse 14. There's no 14. They shall still bear fruit in old age when you are under this anointing. That's why you find prophets don't die. That's what Maurice Rulo used to tell us, and they don't retire. They just rest. Amen? So for you guys, I'm not going to die anytime soon. I might outlive all of you. <laughs> because I'm here today and tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Lord needs me. But if you just want to go quickly, you are just, just go. That's your problem. But me, I have a covenant with God. Hallelujah. And I know the number of my days. So it's good to know that if you are anointed, there is no cessation of waters, miracles, things happening. Hallelujah. The other day I received an email. <laughs> God is doing some strange things. There is a princess I met in New York and we are getting to know each other. So the other day she said, when I was in prayer, the Lord showed me that you will be the next in the line to receive $100 million. Ask the Lord how this can happen. It's in my phone. So that's where I'm heading. 
Not for me, but for a program I'm doing. Uh, I want to be clear. Not for me, he said. We can give your president 100 million to help young people come to America. And I'm working on it. So if you see me on TV with Ruto, giving a check of $100 million, that's where I'm heading. Amen? Amen. But that is not, now I'm only about 60. I'm not yet there, but I will be very soon. But the thing is, another 60 years I might still be here. Amen? Amen. To enjoy the fruits of my labor. <laughs> and all the young people I'm going to help. <laughs> they shall be fresh and that means no ache, no headache, no backache, no what? No teeth decay. <laughs> my God. <laughs> it's really not doing me a good service. Corporate anointing. <laughs> Are you ready for this? So, the, the office anointing is for the prophets, for the apostles, for the teachers, for the evangelists, for the kings, for pastors. That's to establish you in that office. Hallelujah. And you can operate in that office. You can say things and they will happen. Because God has established you in that office. Now, corporate anointing Let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. It's for a glorious church. It's for a glorious church. And really, we can turn this church to be a glorious church. How many would like this year to be a glorious church? Put your hands down. And sometimes I wonder, are some of you really, have you made up your mind that you belong to CCI? Because when we look at the end of the year from the finances, you still find people giving five dollars for a whole year, others fifty dollars for a whole year. That includes tithes and offerings. <laughs> That's zero. <laughs> May God help some of us. Now, Second Chronicles chapter five. <laughs> I don't want to step on people's toes. You are still our brothers. We shall continue to feed you, to mature you until you get established. Hallelujah. That's a good place to say amen. Second Chronicles. That's why some of us must become millionaires. So that we can cover your gap. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 5. Are you there? Let's read. Let's start from verse 12. I don't like to start at the middle. Oh my Lord. Okay, go to verse 11. Yes, let us read now. And it came to pass. Let, let me read. Just listen. Hallelujah. But you can be reading on the, on the board. We have the screen. So, And it came to pass when the priest came out of the most holy place. For all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to the year divisions. Continue. And the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Haman and Judu, uh, Judithun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having sabers, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests sounding with the trumpets. Keep going. Indeed, it came to pass. I want you now to listen. When everybody sanctifies themselves, the pastors sanctify themselves. The bishops sanctify themselves. The prophets sanctify themselves. The apostles sanctify themselves. The pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, and even the members, hallelujah. The intercessors sanctify themselves. The young sanctify themselves. We are all in one accord. Hallelujah. We are all in one spirit. What happens? Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one. Rhythm. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking who? The Lord. the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercies and jewels forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. Continue. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the crowd. 
For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Amen. Bishop, that's where we are heading. Those who don't want to join this chariot, let them begin to park and go. <laughs> because we are heading there. There is a time when we are not going to be able to conduct a normal service here. Everybody will be slain in the spirit. When another one begins to start, want to say something, Hallelujah. Because we shall all be one. We shall be sanctified. There will be no hypocrisy before the Lord. We shall empty ourselves. That's what corporate anointing is all about. There are people who experience this kind of glory, this kind of power as a, as a church. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more. Acts chapter 4 verse that one, and then we shall close. I said, this is going to be a service, so I still have got a few more weeks to cover this. But I believe you are getting somewhere. Because I don't want to teach like you, as I assume you know all these things. That's why today I want to, you to understand a diversity. You understand who a diversity is. You understand what the anointing is and what it does. Now, there is another group here of men and women. Brethren, our sisters and our brothers, who were of one accord, one heart, consecrated. The, there was no hypocrisy, no unforgiveness, no resentment. Nobody hated each other. Hallelujah. There was, they were full of love, the love of God, the love of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They carried each other's burden. They worshipped one God and one Jesus. And they were filled with one spirit, the spirit that proceeds from the Father, the spirit of the Holy Spirit. When they came to pray, this is what happened. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Let's all stand up. Is it possible? If this 2,000 years ago, man, why are we dragging behind? And 2,000 years later, when we say, let us pray, in one minute, you find somebody now is just looking at the others. What are they doing? What are they saying? This is where God is calling all of us. Hallelujah. Corporate anointing is possible in a church. There can be one time when we begin to pray, all of us will be under the Unction of the Holy Spirit. And one will be prophesying there. Another one will be speaking in tongues there. Another one will be interpreting there. Hallelujah. The good thing is, these things are not historical. I am one of those people who used to go to Karura when it was Karura, before things happened. And I remember one night, a man from Mayor called Kenaita, he took us through three hours of non-stop worship. Those days there was fire all over the place. We danced before the Lord. It's inside a, a, a cave. We were about three or four hundred people. There was, I have never seen such love. And it, it, it reached a point whereby you could literally feel this, the fluid fire of God. The power. I remember one, one moment when everybody who was bright, their eyes opened. They started seeing and there was yelling here, yelling there. When that one was happening, the dumb and the mute started to speak. And when there was that yelling and whatever, there, those who were had to, uh, uh, whatever, the, Miracles started to pop like popcorns. And you can imagine the atmosphere. The atmosphere in the, in the cave. That's the place whereby nobody was forced to give anything. You just brought what you had. Amen? It is possible. If we pursue God, 
with a clean heart, if we allow the Lord to consecrate us, if we shed off all the works of the enemy, hatred, division, backbiting, slander, gossip, set them aside. Hallelujah. We embrace the spirit of the Lord. Amen. These things can happen. True love is possible even today in the church. Hallelujah. So there is corporate anointing. And the reason I'm saying this, next Saturday I will continue. Within this season, remember the COVID days? How there was distancing, there was mask, there were so many rules. This season, God is preparing a people who are going to usher in the greatest revival the world has ever seen. And you can be counted. You can be counted. So next Saturday, I will continue on the same line. And I will show you how that is going to happen. And I will show you why this was in Ukraine, in Israel, how they are going to prepare the world for a season. Two things will happen. There is going to be an extraordinary wealthy transfer. And when I talk of wealthy transfer, I'm not talking of cryptocurrency or this uh, 401k. <laughs> that is not a wealthy transfer. Wealthy transfer is divine. Is when God can give you a whole city. Is when God supernaturally can make you a billionaire overnight. And nobody can say a word about it. It's not about money rowdling. Well, the transfer has happened in the past and is about to happen again. When that time comes, because it must be preceded with greater diversity, then get ready for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost power on earth. And all these young people who are troubling you, <laughs> Some of you are so worried that because they are taking those drugs, marijuana, cubero, and all these other nonsense. You do not need even to pray for them. They will be slain. They will be coming here to confess without nobody asking them. But you have to do the right thing. First, consecrate yourselves. And then, by your consecration, you will consecrate them. Amen? That time is coming. I've seen it. I told you the other day, I saw a vision. And I remember my guy here, the Freddy to the bishop. He was the first one to be slain in the Holy Ghost. And he was, he was speaking mysteries and oracles. And everybody was flabbergasted. Because they had not seen anything like that. So it's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. But we must create the environment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Online people, what we are saying here can happen in your church. Hallelujah. Can happen in your house. It happened in the house of Colinarias. It will happen again. Amen. It will start from the household and it will come into the house of the Lord. Let us all lift up our heads. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because you are the author and the finisher of all things. You have set this season and this time, Father, to visit your people. There are doors of opportunity ahead of us. And God, we pray that you give us the mind of the wise, the heart of the knowing, discerning spirit that we shall not enter by the wide door, but we shall strive to enter by the narrow gate and by the narrow door, where we shall enter into a heavenly treasure and be able to tap, O oh God, that which you have set for us. We see unlimited opportunities for winning souls, unlimited opportunities for making wealth and riches, unlimited opportunities, Father, for greatness, even fame and honor. All these things are ahead of us. Our prayer today is that mark these people. Note these hearts, O oh God, 
Deploy your angels like you sent the angel of destiny among the children of Israel to take them to their place. Let none miss their place that you have set and marked for them. Father, I commit them to you. Even as we enter into the coming week and in the weeks ahead, how we pray that we shall not be swayed by the wiles and the snares of the enemy. But we shall be able to recognize them at the door and rebuke them and cast them out and bite them and refuse them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that every tracking spirit, every monitoring spirit, every satanic gadget, monitoring our destinies, monitoring our movements, we cancel them, we cause confusion. Father, we bite them, we rebuke them. In the mighty name of Jesus, may your grace and your favor be our portion for now and forevermore. Bless your people, O oh God, and mark them for greatness. And all to the glory and the honor of your name, through Christ Jesus, our Lord, I pray. And everybody say, Amen. let us meet next Sunday. God bless you. Thank you.